want answers. I want the truth. The truth. You can't handle the truth. Welcome to the Truth Hurts. This is your host, Sule Prince. Sule Prince. Stop me. That really hurts. Whether you like it or not, sometimes the truth hurts. The truth hurts. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Will set you free. Well, welcome, welcome to the Truth Hurts podcast. Now, if this is your first time watching our podcast, you could please subscribe to the truthhurtspodcast.org. We also have the thirddegree.org. Now, if you're looking for more information, you could go to suleprince.com. Now, today is an exciting day because I have with me Samuel Say. He has been on our podcast before. Samuel Say is a blogger. You could read his articles on slowtowrite.com. Also, he works for the Canadian Center for Bioethical Reform. Samuel, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's been nice hanging out with you a little bit today and uh, happy to be back. All right, Samuel, give me your thoughts now. We, we see this Black Lives Matter movement uh, morphing, turning to different things. Now they're pulling down um, statues of historical figures because... They were so-called slave owners, or maybe not even so-called. They, they were slave owners. Mm-hmm. Um, when is this going to stop? And in fact, when is it going to turn against the people that we have grown to love and appreciate mm-hmm. when it doesn't fit their agenda? For an example, um, you know, Black Lives Matter is pro-homosexuality. Um, A guy like Martin Luther King, who would not have endorsed the LGBTQ. Mm-hmm. When is the truth going to come out and they're going to pull down a statue yeah. such as his? Uh, that's a great question. But if you don't mind, before, I, before mm-hmm. I answer that, one of the fascinating things about that is, and I've said it before, uh, the abolitionists and the civil rights movement, they were fighting real people. Mm-hmm. They were trying to remove real oppressive people. Yeah. It says a lot about where we are today when Black Lives Matter, all they can do is let's remove dead people's statues. Yeah. So they don't even have real people to fight. Yeah, they're, they're, they're chasing ghosts. Yeah, that, that says a lot about the movement. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, concerning where we're headed with this, yeah, this is this is not gonna, I think, end anytime soon. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's about people, you know, who were supposedly racist. Some were racist, mm-hmm. and some weren't racist at all. But be, just by virtue of being old white guys, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> they're considered, uh, uh, you know, including even guys like Abraham Lincoln, yeah, um, who. You know, I mean, he was a, a good friend to uh, to Douglas and the abolitionist. I mean, that that man. Sacrificed. And also Cassius Clay, yeah, which was an abolitionist himself, who was very aggressive against it. Who you will hear David Wood talk about him. Uh, Muhammad Ali's original name yeah. was Cassius Clay, yeah, and he changed it to be named after. A person who promoted slavery, which was yeah. the Prophet Muhammad. Exactly. Interesting exactly. sign, though. Yeah. So, yeah, the, 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 where we're headed towards right now is that there will be a time where it will be like, well, Barack Obama, Martin Luther King Jr. Now, Barack Obama, it was pretty obvious that he was privately pro uh, LGBTQ, but mm-hmm. publicly uh, he wasn't. Mm-hmm. Um, on both of his, um, you know, both of his. Um, presidential campaigns he was against uh, same-sex marriage but of course then he uh, ended up you know siding with the um, you know the supreme court um the decision i think in 2013 in america but anyway there'll be a time where they'll say well wait a minute um he was a president who was also anti-lgbtq mm-hmm. and why not remove all essentially all his posters and, and mm-hmm. statues and signs and all that mm-hmm. or even right now I've said this before. What if right now, since we're in the, um, the pandemic, what if the person who finds the cure is a woman and this woman has had an abortion mm-hmm. and we build a statue for this person? Mm-hmm. But then one day when finally we have ended abortion and that the whole world agrees that abortion is wrong, mm-hmm. should we then remove the statue of this woman mm-hmm. who saved so many lives? Because they had an abortion. Mm-hmm. You and I hate abortion, but we say no mm-hmm. because people are complex. Yeah. We live in a sinful world. We've all done a lot of evil things, right? We've all done a lot of wrong things, but that's not 
in terms of how we relate to each other, that's not what defines you as a person. Mm -hmm. We're much more complex than that. And that's wrong. And of course, also, some of these guys, they live as in like some of the, you know, people who's, um, statues are not being removed. They live in a complex time. Yeah. So right now, we all think we would never um, be slave owners. Mm -hmm. Look, I mentioned to you earlier about the, uh, the fact that 30% um, percent of freed black people in the South own slaves. We say, how is that possible? That was what you did, as, as earlier, as I said, that's what you did to survive as a wealthy person. Mm -hmm. They didn't see it through the same lens that we see it now. Yeah. We now rightly hate slavery. Mm -hmm. but at that time, it was part of the culture. Yeah. In the same way that many of us have friends who've had abortions, mm -hmm. but we're so used to it in this culture that we don't even hate it as much as we should. Yeah. And we're not going to hate it as, we don't hate it as much as we will 20 mm -hmm. years from now. Yeah. Because we are living in that environment, mm -hmm. right? So we need to be much more um, understanding of why people do the things they do. That's, yeah. an, that's, an, uh, that's an excuse, yes. but just as understanding the nature of sin and the nature, I, I said before, the nature look, of the time, right? Yes. Uh, I've also said this too. A lot of the people right now who are removing these statues mm -hmm. have done far worse than the slave owners and the racist. Mm -hmm. They've actually killed people. They've killed their own children, many of them. Yeah. Right, and as Christians, we also recognize mm -hmm. God does not cancel. If you are in Christ, mm -hmm. right? So, for example, there's a um, George Whitfield uh, um, statue has been removed. Uh, I think it has been removed right now in um, the University of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. They can remove his statue, fine, but he's not going to be removed from heaven. Yeah. Right. Christ mm -hmm. does not cancel people who trust in Him. Yeah. He cancels sin, but not you know not sinners who believe yeah. in Him. But the people who are canceling Him, Christ will cancel mm -hmm. them. Yeah. It's so you know, but especially we Christians should not be embracing this culture. We should not be yes. you know following it at all. Yeah, I, I find it interesting uh, just to tackle into what you're saying. They want to pull down these statues of these individuals who are slave owners. Mm. Were they put up because they own slaves? No. But they want to pull it down because of what they have done. Exactly. These same people, while they're pulling down the statue, who agree with killing an unborn child. Yep. Right? Yep. An unborn black child. Yep. Uh, so slavery is bad. We agree. Mm -hmm. But murdering the unborn black child in the womb of a mother mm -hmm. is just as worse as well. Yeah. Same people. You see the it's hypocrisy? Uh, uh, it's even worse. Mm -hmm. Because, um, so for example, again, slavery was wrong. Mm -hmm. In America, since uh, Roe v. Wade has been it was passed, 20 million black people yeah. in America have been murdered through abortion. Mm -hmm. 20 million. So amazing. The number of Africans that were that were forced out of Africa mm -hmm. through slave trade what was, was through the slave trade was 12 million people. Wow. And only two million of the 12 came to America. Mm -hmm. So two million black people were forced into America. Mm -hmm. 20 million, right? Uh, uh, 10 times as more, you know, more black people since the last 40 years or 50 years uh, have been killed. Wow. And look at the time span too. Exactly. Slavery was what, 400 years? R right? uh, it, it, across uh, Britain and America, yeah, yes. Yeah, 400 years. Then we have the uh, segregation. But in such a small time span, how many... Blacks have been killed mm -hmm. in the unsafest uh, place, a mother's womb today, mm -hmm. which is an yeah. unsafe place yeah. to be. Yeah. Which is quite sad. Women. If you can't, if you, because right now, yes, the, the most unsafe place to be is, you know, in, you know to, or to be black or to be anybody mm -hmm. is in the womb, mm -hmm. where one in four uh, women get abortion, and it's even higher amongst black women. Yeah. So... But that should be the safest place for a person, and yeah. yet it's not the most unsafe place. But yet, as a culture, we celebrate that. Yeah. We celebrate the That's abortions, beautiful. Yeah. And then we, you know, we're actually, but you know, we're out there fighting ghosts mm -hmm. instead of trying to save the real babies. That's very interesting. Okay, let's talk uh, just uh, briefly about um, Pan Africanism. Mm -hmm. Explain that to me. So Pan Africanism 
was in some ways really kind of created by Marcus Gar- Garvey or a fellow mm-hmm. Jamaican. But then uh, <laughs> it was most embraced and popularized by my fellow Ghanaian. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kwame so you're part of it. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Um, but no, um, yeah, so Pan-Africanism is really the idea that all black people should unite, especially Africans should unite as one, as one state. And, um, you know, because the the idea is the entire world is against black people or mm-hmm. Africa, which, and, you know, Black Lives Matter is a very pan-Africanist movement too, which is why they are a global organization. They exist, of course, in America, Canada, Britain, um, primarily in other nations too, but primarily in those three nations. Um, but pan-Africanism is yes, that black people, especially Africa, should unite as one unified group, no matter their, 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 uh, differences, just unite as one group. And really, especially to apply socialistic uh, views. Mm-hmm. Um, the problem is because they are socialist and because they are communist, they've actually destroyed Africa mm. more than any other group. It may seem shocking, but the facts bear this out. It was, it's so, so Pan Africanists overwhelmingly were the liberators in Africa. So Kwame Nkrumah was again Ghana's first president and um, he helped Ghana remove one tyrant in mm-hmm. the British Empire and he became an even worse tyrant oh, himself wow. to the point that there was a coup against him. Wow. But yet Ghana at least we were spared because it was a coup against him we were spared from we had some troubles too with other communist um, leaders too but we didn't have it as bad as other people mm. where um, essentially name any powerful African dictator they were all Pan-Africanist, okay. every single one, mm-hmm. every single one. And they were much more atrocious, much more evil than even the European um, uh, colonialist in in, uh, in Africa. And so right now everyone talks about, you know, how behind Africa is. Well, we are sadly for a long time, we were actually better off. I'm not saying it was good to be mm-hmm. under colonialism, but none, by, no, it wasn't. But Pan-Africanism destroyed Africa to a level that many people said it was actually, many Africans were saying it was actually better wow. economically to live under the, under the tyrants in Europe than the tyrants in our own home. Wow. Can you, uh, how, how, what, what, what did they specifically do? They were killing uh, people who didn't agree with them. Okay. Um, as in like the political rivals. They were, uh, they were communist, which destroyed Africa. Mm-hmm. So for example, I was telling my mom, I was born in 1987 and uh, my mom was, my dad, for, uh, my dad left before I was born because mm-hmm. the, the Ghanaian economy in part was really, really bad. So he fled and I've never seen him. Mm-hmm. My mom always told me that that time was very bad economically, but she didn't understand why. And then here I am reading all these history books, and I'm like, Mom, so tell me again about the period where you, um, you know, the Ghana economy was so bad. She's like, well, between 84 to 88, that was when Ghana had also then implemented communist policies. Wow. So it destroyed, it dis- it, the economy was so bad that many Ghanaians, like my dad, felt they had, they had no other choice but to leave their families and to go elsewhere. Wow. Um, now... That's on him, right? Not just the government policies, but bad policies can create bad parents. Yes. Right? So, um, so yeah, you had a lot of civil wars were created out of these things and there's the, the, the war crimes and, um, just, you know, them living in excess because as I said earlier, socialism or communism will create a political elite yeah. and they will take care of their families and their friends, but they're First. not going to take care of the entire country. Yeah. So there's so much yeah. corruption and mm-hmm. all that. So it's actually only now for the last 20, 25 years that Africa is becoming more capitalistic. Africa is moving away from socialism. Mm-hmm. And that's why Africa is now the fastest growing economy, well, continent wise in the world, wow. because we are now deviating from our communist, pan Africanist past. Amazing. Sam, it has been such a pleasure to have you on this program. As I say, the truth hurts. Facts don't care about your feelings, <laughs> and facts don't care also about your perceptions your perceptions are not proof Mm. thank you for watching thank you for watching this video if you like what you just watched click the subscribe button and beside that is the bell icon click that it will notify you of all upcoming videos also if you like this video click the like button but if you don't like what you just watched you don't agree that's okay go into the comments leave a comment let's dialogue and talk thank you